So Lucian, thank you for your time today. Could you start by explaining your current focus? Our current focus as Robot Reshape and Innovation Centre is trying to be as much empowering for patients as possible. In your opinion, why do e-health projects fail? Well, that's mainly one of the focuses that we are uh, actually at. Uh, we see that a lot of e-health projects start from a perspective of healthcare professionals. Uh, by them ignited from an idea that they have that uh, patients could benefit from some electronic features actually, but never actually asked patients themselves. And that's one of the things that we did is that every project that we start starts with engaging with patients, family or informal care themselves. For that, I appointed two years ago a chief listening officer into my innovation team. And um, other than alone talking to healthcare professionals about what they think that's needed, she also talks to patients in formal care and their family. And mostly every time, to be honest, there is a gap between those two. And we think at present that that gap is exactly why a lot of the e-health projects fail, since it's not set up by and from the perspective that the users in the end are incorporated with it. Can you tell me more about the Patients Included Act and why pa including patients in conferences is so important? Well, it reflects actually on the same that I was talking uh, to you a, a second ago. Uh, looking on conferences, it somehow at one point kind of blew my mind that we are talking about patients on a lot of healthcare conferences with doctors and with administrators and technical people and policy makers, researchers. And I sense that almost in every case, there were no patients, no patients invited to the conference, no patients allowed to get in other than having them paying to, uh, for the entrance. And that started uh, with a blog that I set up and told, well, actually I want to stop speaking at conferences that no patients are included, not in the program, not incorporated uh, with the, set the setup of the conferences. And it somehow took off. Uh, a lot of conferences worldwide already are using the logo uh, in combination with actually putting patients on stage. Since it's kind of weird talking about change in healthcare without the targeted group themselves uh, engaged in it. It's kind of like we know what they need, and on a daily basis, like I said with our chief listening officer, we prove the opposite. We have not a good idea of what patients need, actually, on that. In what ways can crowdsourcing benefit health? Patients are, at present, I think, the least utilized research resources in healthcare. Um, crowdsourcing, for instance, through the internet, gives us the ability to easy engage with large groups of patients. And if you have a large network, for instance, in social media, like I do myself and have about like 8,000 followers, it seems to be very easy and very uh, beneficial to ask the community on what they think that could be handy and easy, but also to start a co-creation uh, process on that. The first time I utilized that was with the AED project, AED for You, uh, in which I tried to map as many as possible of the AEDs that are uh, in our society, since nobody had a clue how many there were and also not where there were. And my hunch was that whenever you are in some kind of city that you're not acquainted with and somebody collapses in front of your eyes and you would have to bring in an AED and not knowing where this was, it could help uh, to do that. So we start, we set up a website for that and asked literally everybody in social media at first uh, whether they know uh, where the position of an AED was and submit it. And in the Netherlands already more than 17 and a half thousand AEDs are submitted in the system. The app has been downloaded over a hundred thousand times already. And um, we see an enormous engagement from the crowd to 
work with us to set up this system, which is already on a worldwide basis. And um, what benefits have you seen so far from your project to use smartphones to identify AEDs? One is that it, it, it kind of struck us how many people are willing to engage and help with it. Uh, the second is that we've got um, a, a, a big database for the Netherlands for all the AEDs, and people can find an AED in case of an emergency very easy uh, at present. So from that, we think that in your neighborhood, knowing where these AEDs are situated and at what times that they were accessible, uh, that, uh, that, that helps a lot. What do you think the future of healthcare looks like? We think that healthcare is migrating from what I call an ego system in which doctors, nurses and healthcare institutions are at the center of the universe, at least they think that they are. Uh, we think it's migrating into more like an ecosystem where it's more based on network, where patients, family and their informal care more and more, for instance, by help of electronic uh, uh, systems, uh, are more empowered to stay longer at their own surroundings and getting the ability to get uh, dismissed earlier and, and sooner to their own neighborhood, for instance. And in that, there is a role change of informed people that are able to create shared decision-making together with their physicians. Lucian, thank you very much for your time and for your insights. You're welcome.